Today in this uh, video, let us understand about a lookup activity and Azure Data Factory. So lookup activity, uh, like any other activity, uh, so I mean, uh, there are a few common uh, features that uh, it, it has and uh, but apart from that, uh, so specifically why we use lookup activity and which are the scenarios we use in lookup activity in Azure Data Factory and uh, in real time, uh, what exactly real time projects are, uh, what exactly, uh, when exactly lookup activity is used. Uh, so we can understand that uh, with uh, some theoretical explanation, uh, explanation and also demo. So before getting started, uh, if you are uh, new to this channel and haven't uh, subscribed for this channel, I would recommend you to please subscribe uh, for this channel and also press bell button for instant notification and also share with your uh, friends and colleagues who are interested to learn about data and data engineering. So let's get started. So as you can see, uh, the lookup activity, basically we will be using uh, this for uh, uh, reading and uh, returning a content of a configuration file or table. So the question is why do we use a configuration file or a table? So when we say configuration file or table, so this 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 will be used specifically uh, to kind of a do a automation, right? Suppose if you want to read a uh, hundred files, okay, like file one, file two, file three, you want to read hundred files. Which are those hundred files? You will store those in the configuration table or configuration file. Or uh, in other way, you want to read uh, out of uh, 100 tables, we have a uh, sources table and you want to read uh, out of 100 tables, you want to read 10 tables. So what are those 10 tables? You will store in the configuration file or configuration table. So based on that, uh, you will be able to uh, dynamically fetch the values from this configuration table. So because you are not hard coding anything here, so you are just, uh, today there, there may be 10, 10 tables uh, in the configuration table or 10 files in the configuration tables. Uh, only those uh, 10 files or 10 tables on the source will be picked up. So tomorrow you want to add additional tables or files, you, want, you can go ahead and add in the configuration so table or uh, file, there is no change in the code. So in such automations, uh, you will be using uh, the configuration table and uh, so to refer the configuration table, uh, specifically uh, the lookup will be used. And also to return the result of an executed uh, query in a query or a stored procedure. So you can also use a lookup activity. Uh, as, we, as I said, we can use the lookup activity in two cases. One is when you connect to a database uh, table, you can uh, do a lookup on database table or you can do a lookup uh, look on a file. File which is stored in a blog or ADLS or any file system for that matter. Or uh, in another case, when you're connecting to SQL, as you mentioned, we mentioned uh, like uh, it can uh, do a lookup on table, it can do a lookup on query uh, and also it can do a lookup on stored procedure. That means uh, it will be able to fetch the result from the query, fetch the result from the stored procedure instead of just a table. So if you want to use query or uh, stored procedure, custom uh, query or stored procedure, you can utilize them. And uh, the, uh, the output what we get is, uh, it might be array, uh, usually it will be array if there are uh, multiple values uh, in the configuration table or file. Or if it is single value, that will be a singleton value uh, that can be consumed in subsequent uh, activities. So say for example, what we mean by subsequent activity is uh, if you want to uh, uh, copy 10 files uh, out of 100 files from a, from a source location. So these 10 files will be stored in your configuration file or table. And uh, so this will be looked up okay, using a lookup activity. And these 10 file names uh, will be uh, read from the configuration table and sent to the copy activity. Uh, in a for each loop or something, right? So for each will take an array from the lookup activity and it, it will execute 10 times. The copy activity will execute 10 times because lookup will give the result to the copy activity uh, as an array. So and that array will be having 10 elements obviously, right? So that's how uh, uh, the output can be utilized uh, in any uh, subsequent copy activity or transformation activity or any control activities or like for each uh, activity. So that's the uh, theoretical uh, portion of a lookup activity. Hope that is clear. And uh, going up to the next slide, uh, so in the demo, let, let's see the demo, uh, as we say, uh, lookup can be used for uh, table-based sources and file-based sources. Table-based sources, as you can see, you can connect to any database, uh, any SAP uh, related tables, uh, like uh, you can use Oracle, you can use uh, SQL, uh, like any Hive table, Databricks table. So any table-based sources, right, you can do a lookup. And any file-based sources, like uh, any files uh, source, which is like a blob storage, ADLS, uh, uh, Windows file system, Linux file system, so you can do a or like Amazon S3 bucket. So like that, you can use any file-based uh, sources also, okay? And also in the demo, we'll uh, take a few real-time cases uh, where we can apply this uh, lookup activity and where usually it will be applied in, uh, in real-time projects. So let's uh, jump into the demo now. So as you can see, uh, I'm in the Azure Data Factory uh, screen now and uh, I'm inside a pipeline. So inside a pipeline, I'm able to get a lookup activity. You can search just a lookup activity here and you can drag and drop uh, lookup, lookup activity like any other activity. And uh, so let us go in detail, right? So uh, in the general tab, what you see is like uh, any other uh, activity. So we see a name of activity. You can give any name for this uh, activity. So the lookup demo you can give any name for this. And uh, similarly for the description, you can give any description for the documentation. And uh, if you want to uh, 
time out this if it is running continuously if you want to make it a time out you can give the time out here and uh, so and if you want to if it is failed if you want to retry it uh, with some regular intervals uh, you can give the interval like you will retry for a multiple times so many times you can do that and secure input secure output as you know uh, in the previous video we have explained this so if you want to uh, send the data uh, from one activity to another activity in a secure or in, in an encrypted way so you will, you will be using this secure input and secure output so that it will not show in the output like in the output you can see here uh, whatever the output you can clearly see right so this output will be encrypted when uh, when uh, it is displaying here and also when it is sent to the next uh, activity so when you are consuming it the secure input will be checked uh, when, the, when you are sending out uh, this uh, value as a secure output you should be checking this and uh, coming to the settings part of it uh, so settings uh, as uh, uh, like settings will look up settings will take uh, one or more i mean at least one data set so not one or more data set it will take only one data set so specifically so at least one data set uh, or one data set we should be giving here okay so without data set lookup will not work so i'll just quickly show you the data set this data set we are connecting to a sql db so related to the uh, creation of data set and link services uh, you can uh, check in the previous video we have explained how to create the data set and link service we will not go in detail for that but now we have a, a data set uh, which is pointing to a particular table okay so uh, this is my data set and uh, so as you can see i have selected uh, uh, like in, in the theoretical part of it we have explained we can use a lookup for both a database uh, table or uh, files okay so if you are using for a database table uh, you have to specify a table or you can give a query so you can just give a select start from the query here or you can just use a table okay so the output of the table or the output of the query or the output of the store procedure so will be looked up and sent to the next subsequent activity so we have an option uh, three options here whatever you can choose so if you select a store procedure you need to select whatever the store procedure and if you want to select a query you should uh, type in the query here and if you just click on a table it will uh, de defaultly take the table which is selected here in the data set level so uh, now uh, so these are the options that you see when we select a lookup uh, on a table table based source right but when you want to look up uh, your configuration based on the file so in that case uh, you will definitely have other options other different options as you can see uh, you, will, you will have to specify the file uh, basically which file you are referring to right? uh, after that like start date start time ending time like uh, similarly like metadata activity so you can choose uh, the file based on the uh, filter of the last modified time so that you can pick up a most uh, latest file from the source and something like that and so once you uh, select this you can uh, it, it means that you are looking up based on the file source okay so for for now uh, we are just selecting the like uh, we want to show you the table based or the query based uh, like i'm just selecting uh, i'll just switch back to the sql database and i'll show you there is a configuration table i have created right so as you can see if i just query this configuration table i have just two entries uh, with column uh, column names and column names as id and file name and one and two is uh, id values and this is a file name customer and a customer v1 dot csv is the file name so why i'm storing these two values here okay so the intention for me is to uh, like as you as you know this is a configuration table right so i want to keep all the file names which i want to get copied from one location to another location from one blob location to another blob location right so that is the reason uh, actually we are uh, maintaining this in the configuration table how many entries you make all the entries from this configuration will be uh, configuration table will be read from through the lookup so let us see and uh, let us execute uh, this query and see before that i want to make it a uh, configuration based uh, let's just like select start from config underscore table so which is a, which is actually my configuration table right so you can also give the stored procedure if you have a stored procedure you can select it and uh, the output of the stored procedure can be uh, uh, i mean pushed out of the lookup activity and uh, similarly table also you can give it will select the entire table the advantage of using query is uh, you can apply the where condition like any filters if you want to apply or any joins if you, if you want to apply any joins between two tables in that case you have to go for query so if you select the table you don't have that option the entire table will be uh, fetched so now i'll just try to uh, look up only this uh, lookup activity i mean now uh, trigger this lookup activity and see and uh, as you can see it is succeeded and uh, it returns uh, to uh, two set of values that is uh, id1 file name customer dot uh, csv id2 file name is customer v1.csv as you can see the same value which we have uh, stored in our uh, database uh, so the same values uh, have been fetched uh, in lookup activity in the form of json right so this is uh, this uh, values uh, which is stored in the table with a uh, header or columns so the same are uh, uh, plot in the in the form of json because the adf uh, uh, considers everything as a json format so input output uh, and also the, uh, the 
pipeline code or data set code everything it will store in the json format right so now uh, if i so since it is giving me the output uh, so a file name and fi file names here so we should be able to consume the file names okay this is an array the value is an array right so we should be able to consume the file names uh, from this array and uh, if we just uh, use this file names uh, in the copy activity dynamically so then we'll be able to copy the data for the subsequent uh, i mean we can use the copy activity right for that let us uh, start using the copy activity so the output of this lookup uh, we will be able to give to the copy activity so what we will do is uh, we will just uh, we are having a copy activity i mean the, uh, the data set already let us try to clone the data set uh, and uh, so here the test container we are uh, having already a container called test container and uh, we will just uh, change to output we will uh, create a subfolder inside a test container the source will be a uh, test container and uh, inside test container you have kept the files and uh, the the particular uh, sync i mean the output will be having uh, the same content but you are storing in a uh, output directory and uh, here uh, so we are trying to make it dynamic right so since we are uh, trying to make it dynamic uh, we should uh, so like the copy activity what we are uh, executing here uh, should be inside a for each loop so that is the reason we will bring a for each loop and this copy activity has to go inside for each loop and uh, as you know the output of lookup activity is a array and for each is eligible to uh, to take array value and uh, parse that value if the lookup is giving 10 elements or 10 array elements so for each will execute 10 times so now lookup has given us uh, two uh, two elements array elements right for each will execute two times and whatever you are keeping inside for each loop that will also execute the same number of times that is two times in our case so here source will be our uh, first data set so this data set and uh, sync will be our second data set and uh, only change uh, we have to make here is at a data set level is uh, instead of hard coding the value right so we will have to kind of uh, parameterize this data set so you can give any data set uh, any name here i'll just give a p file name once you parameterize the data set automatically once you click on uh, file name and click on add dynamic content that uh, parameter will be whatever you define the parameters will be populated here and you can click and create this okay similarly we will do it for uh, the output parameter also output data set also okay. so this we can make it as a output data set and here also i'll create a p file name okay and uh, here instead of hard coding this value i'll be kind of creating p file value so now our do both the data sets are ready and uh, so we can uh, similarly like uh, so just to uh, please note that you can also parameterize the uh, like the data set also you can create uh, one more uh, one more parameter for the directory p directory and you can parameterize the directory also that is the folder also at this point we will not do it so uh, that's out of scope would mention and uh, coming to this uh, pipeline which uh, is having a copy activity inside for each loop so what we will do is uh, so here uh, as you see, as we have parameterized the data set uh, file name it is asking the file name now and this file name will be will has to be fetched from the configuration table right so in the configuration table we are telling uh, i want to copy customer dot csv and customer v1 dot csv so this will be uh, fetched from the lookup and this lookup activity we are giving to for each and inside for each we, we can be able to refer that lookup output of the lookup as you can see so lookup dot value dot array or you have a lookup dot demo okay yeah before that let us take this value and uh, just for a demo purpose i'll uh, use a set variable and show you before actually proceeding to the for each loop take set variable from here and uh, since i don't want to execute a uh, for each loop here uh, i'll just put a checkpoint uh, and i can debug uh, only till this so that's why you can see this is disabled so i'll just use one variable uh, of, uh, of uh, array type and uh, i can get the output right so if i execute this you can see uh, like what exactly the output looks like in the set variable now before set variable uh, we can see the output of the lookup right based on the output of the lookup only we'll be able to make out so it is giving the value array and inside value what i'm interested in is uh, the file name so how my code should look inside my uh, for each activity is uh, or uh, inside the copy activity inside for each is uh, so it will be value dot uh, file name like uh, suppose if i'm giving this value and uh, here i should be able to give value dot file name so uh, in the source uh, please note that uh, there is uh, when you are configuring this source file name there's something called as for each uh, current 
current item that means because you are in a for each loop uh, this is uh, by default uh, it will be uh, populating here we just need to click it and since uh, you have two columns right you have uh, two columns like id and file name uh, which will be coming as a json uh, header so that we have already seen so we want to we are interested in file name right so since we are interested in file name we'll just give file name item uh, parenthesis dot file name so and in the sync also i want to maintain the same file name because of that i'll just give the same uh, option and uh, now i can uh, try to trigger this pipeline so as you can see uh, the for each uh, has executed one time but uh, the activities within for each has executed two times that means uh, what we have kept inside uh, for each activity is copy activity right because uh, lookup is giving uh, two count that means uh, two uh, two elements of array to the for each loop uh, uh, the for each will execute two times and uh, since we are executing for each two times the copy activity will execute two times but first time as you can see it will be taking the first file okay and the second time it will be taking the second file so that we can see in the uh, output like we can see a lot of uh, details in the like, copy activity output but uh, before that uh, so i want to show you in the container itself uh, so as you can see this is my container uh, which is uh, uh, having uh, the input files so these are the these are the two input files but uh, I i'm copying these two input files uh, into the output folder i'll just go to the output folder and you can see both the input files are copied so similarly uh, so as you can see with just uh, the combination of lookup and for each loop uh, i'm uh, able to use a copy activity so there is a i'm I, i'm not using a multiple copy activities right i'm just using one copy activity the same one copy activity is able to copy the copy two files okay similarly so now if i want to copy 10 files i just need to make entry in this config table with the, those 10 file names which i uh, i want to copy from source to target so there is no code change required since it is dynamically taking uh, the lookup is dynamically taking from this config table so this uh, lookup will uh, give the output to the for each loop uh, with 10 array elements and then the for each will execute 10 times and uh, subsequently the copy activity will execute 10 times to copy all the 10 files from the source location to the target uh, output location so that is the i mean you can understand uh, or we can sense the beauty of using the lookup and for each combination uh, uh, for kind of a uh, make the things more dynamic uh, right so without any code change uh, it will be all dynamically uh, uh, maintained so this is how in any real time project the lookup will be used uh, to make the things configurable and if you are uh, if you want to copy 10 files okay you just need to make entry 10 files here or similarly if you want to uh, copy 10 tables okay all the 10 tables entry you can make here instead of file name you can give a table name or something and then uh, you can give the output of this lookup to the for each loop and in, uh, inside for each uh, you can uh, in the source you will definitely connect to the database uh, where these 10 tables are located as a source and you'll be able to copy all the 10 files with just a single copy activity because it's a for each child lookup combination so hope uh, you understood this concept with these demos and also you might have understood the power of using lookup activity and to make the things configurable lookup activity is predominantly used for uh, like such control control table or config table uh, kind of scenarios in the real time projects to make the things uh, like ingestion and transformation more dynamic in nature instead of uh, just uh, hard coding the values right so that's the beauty of it and uh, now uh, we will just see the limitation of lookup activity and uh, so as you can as we mentioned already it is uh, specifically targeted to be used for uh, control uh, or configuration kind of scenarios uh, so that is the reason uh, the microsoft has given uh, some limitation for this saying it can uh, constitute only 500 5000 rows uh, and uh, uh, and or the maximum size limitation is 4, 4 mb for this control table or uh, control file or config table or config file whatever you have mentioned so that has to be uh, in the limited size okay and if you want to if you have a scenario where you want to use more entries so then uh, there is a you can make a design level pipeline design level changes you can create a child pipeline or something like that and use a for each uh, act, uh, activity something like uh, inner pipeline and then uh, so you can create a uh, multiple tables uh, to do a kind of a master table and child table and then uh, so that you can make sure that it will not each table are not exceeding 5000 rows so you can uh, design in such a way that at a I mean, basically, you can do a data model, uh, basically, to not to exceed uh, 5,000 uh, limits in each table when you're doing lookup. So that is the workaround we can uh, do at a uh, design uh, data data modeling level. Okay, and uh, hope uh, this was useful uh, regarding explanation of uh, lookup activity, and hope uh, you would you hope you are able to understand the power of using lookup and uh, for each combination, which is quite important. Thanks for watching.